Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. Oh, hello there! Help, 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 help. Right, wife. Life good. Wife fight back. Kill wife. Wife gone. Think about wife. Regret. Alright, let's get into it. So, over the years, I've been playing this little indie game series called Dark Souls, and there are three games in total. And when you get stuff like this, conversations are bound to come up regarding what's the best and worst of the series. However, what makes this one different is that in this case, it is very, very one-sided. The vast majority would say that Dark Souls 2 is the worst, so much so that it's even spawned ah, self-aware jokes as a result. I also have gone on record saying how I think Dark Souls 2 is the worst as well. Not necessarily a bad game, just vastly okay. worse than the others. And after ragging on this game for years, I think it's about time I got my thoughts and feelings down about this game as plainly as possible. I'm not going to mess around with any more intro, I just want to get into it, but I really need to say this. If you're a Dark Souls 2 fan and are discouraged by what I'm about to say, please at least watch this part of the video because it is the most important part. All right, let's go. Okay, so I really want to start strong with a topic a lot of people probably knew was coming, adaptability. Now, on paper, it sounds like a great idea, and you can see why they wanted to put it in the game. Like an agility stat, which dictates how nimble you are, how quick your rolls are, how quick your magic is, how quick you can use items. It, it sounds great, right? Well, it's probably one of the worst ideas ever. Okay, I've been playing fucking Dark Souls 2 for fucking 17 hours straight. It is the worst game ever. And it all comes down to one thing changing the invincibility frames on a roll. Before we talk about this though, it's important that we discuss one thing first, ah! the player's defensive options. Mainly, you have two options, block and roll. And roll is, and always will be, the better of the two. When you block, you have to stand still, maybe take some chip damage, maybe become staggered, and lose stamina. Now, compare that to a roll, where you get to reposition, avoid damage, and still lose stamina, one is clearly better than the other. There is a third option, but I'll come back to this. Now, for a beginner, you can't expect them to start dodging instantly. Around eight to nine players out of 10 beginners would probably start with the block, as it is the easier out of the two options, because the roll, you have to time. But you'd hope by around about the mid-game kind of section of the game, a newcomer would realise how good the role is comparatively. And you'd hope, best case scenario, they'd try and transition from a block build to try and dodge more often. So adaptability. What this stat does is increase the time you are invincible while rolling. The soft cap is 39, tripling your invincibility. This is absolute shite on so many levels. Firstly, how the hell can the game balance a consistent difficulty or challenge around a goalpost which is constantly moving? Um, imagine you're a boss designer for Dark Souls 1. You have a clear idea in your head for what makes a boss hard because at level 1 or 100, the player's dodge and block is the same. Animation-wise, invincibility-wise, it is the same. But your dodge here is constantly getting better, or, or maybe it isn't because you, you didn't level it. Like, how can you get a clear idea in your head of how to make something challenging if there isn't a core, stable foundation to build and balance around? And as much as people like to laugh about it, that's why the hitboxes in Dark Souls 2 are so shit. Because at one point, the game designers were probably like, yeah, the player might have this uh, kind of role by now, so it might make it this hard. Secondly, on adaptability, the transition from a block build to a dodge build is heavily discouraged. As I said before, you'd hope for a new player, they realize the value of a dodge and transition from a block build to a dodge build when they're more comfortable. However, in Dark Souls 2, that transition is near enough impossible unless you clock this importance right at level one. S say you're mid game, like level 70, and you're like, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe I should try dodging a bit more now. Well, you can't because your adaptability has just been left at seven this entire game. And now if you want to try and start leveling that, it's going to be like 10k souls ago now. So good luck catching up. 
and the game might be like, oh, well, the player might have 20 adaptability by now. So let's make it this kind of hard. And no, you don't make that transition. You stay blocking and you don't learn. Like, I, I don't know what your adaptability is. No one knows what your adaptability is. So how the hell can you balance that? It is such an incredibly terrible idea. But there is one saving grace. Going back to the player's best defensive options, there is a third and insanely best option and that is walking around an attack. Essentially, what this is, is a dodge which you regain stamina on. You reposition, you take no damage, but you also regen stamina. It is insanely efficient. Now, all Dark Souls games have this to some like, varying degree. However, in Dark Souls 2, there are so, so, so many places where you can find examples and patterns of where to perform these. And it's not just even the first bosses like I'm showing here, even the late game ones, I even the ones which people say are the hardest bosses in Dark Souls 2. So hey, if you didn't level adaptability, that's okay. You, you can probably do this instead and make the game a complete joke. And if you did level adaptability, you now have the most overpowered role in the entire Souls trilogy. So the game's still a fucking joke either way. Right, so let's say now that you've dodged the attack by being overpowered with 39 adaptability or overpowered with just walking around attacks with common sense. Now, you might have to heal. And once again, you've got two choices. Estus or Life Gem. Now again, like all things in Dark Souls 2, it sounds great on paper. Life Gems are these little top-up heals which are permanently consumed and just slowly top up health so you can save the big heal for later. Great idea. And actually, yeah it was until they added an extremely cheap way to get an infinite amount of them. Now hopefully you can see why having 99 opportunities for healing might be better than a maxed out Estus of 12 or so uses. But there is something I want to put forward and it's that not only is the vast quantity of life gems better, the actual heal itself is also better. This comes in two parts. First up, the downside of the life gem is supposed to be the slow speed of the heal. The life gems you combine an infinite amount of heal 500, which is a lot. The start in Estus heals 550, but the life gem heal is done over time as I suppose to the Estus, which is almost instant. But honestly, the small heal over time really, really isn't that bad. It really isn't. In some cases, it can even be more advantageous because an Estus Sip covers damage done to you. However, a Life Gem can cover damage done to you and also damage yet to be done due to the slow burn nature. To be honest, that's a bit of a light point to make, but one worth making. However, this second point is undeniably what makes Life Gems better than an Estus. Being able to move and heal at the same time I cannot put into words how extremely efficient and important this is. Hopefully the footage on screen is doing that point for me. I mean, this really does a lot more than you think, it really does. You, you avoid so much danger, so much more than you think, you really do. It, even if life gems healed for half their value at 250, they would still be a better heal because of this. I mean for God's sake, you can even walk around some attacks while healing. And what does that remind you of? Now of course the main appeal is the fact that there's an infinite amount of these and you can easily get them. Some people say it's quite hard to keep a good stock of them, but it really isn't. It's, it's a kind of like a Dark Souls 2 routine. Early game, all it takes is for you to not level like once or twice up and you can get like 30 of them. Mid to late game, you might be just below the next level up. So instead of taking the souls out into the world and maybe losing them, top up the life gems. So not only is your heal infinite, a better heal than the Estus, they're also incredibly easy to maintain. What a joke. So we've talked about two extremely common Dark Souls 2 problems, but I did feel it was important to stress their part in the integrity of this game. But now I want to bring up points which I feel should be talked about more. The combat. So, it's oh, hello, really man. different. I know it's not fair to keep referring this to other Souls games because it is a really different game, but I think it's important here. So for the combat examples, we're just going to use the straight swords as examples because they're seen as the most well-balanced, well-rounded, normal weapons. So here's Dark Souls 1, let's do some stuff. 
The swings themselves are fucking gorgeous, but what's really nice here is the time it takes after a swing to roll out. It's almost nothing. So now, let's see Dark Souls 2 approach, and I am going to have the on-screen controller capture here, so you guys know I'm not taking the piss. Fucking hell. Right, so looking at this, you might be like, well, it's no big deal, Lenny. It's like, what, half a second? Maybe a second longer to get out? Well, how is that important? It is the most important thing when deciding the tempo of a fight. Back to Dark Souls 1. If I want to try and play aggressive to like seal out a kill, I can try. I can maybe squeeze out this last hit, then boom, right out. It feels great. You feel like you're really engaging in the game. Really high speed, high tempo, lots of fun. Okay, let's try and see how Dark Souls 2 go out. And there you go. It's not rewarded. And that's okay. Dark Souls 2 is its own game, and it doesn't have to have the same combat as 1 and 3. Okay, but this. what this does is something I like to call turn-based Dark Souls 2 combat. Right, let's go. So it's the boss's turn right now. I'm not going to do anything. Okay, my go. One, two. All right, okay, no more than two. I don't want to get aggressive. It's not rewarded. All right, his turn. I don't want to try and squeeze in my attack here because I'll get punished due to the rollout window. Okay, oh, my turn. All right, now it's his turn. All right, it's my turn. Right, I'm getting impatient. Oh, oh, oh never mind, never mind. Turn burst, turn burst. His turn. My turn. You get the idea. It's so slow. So, so slow. I mean, look at it. It's just so fucking odgy podgy. Wow, wow, you fucking bad. Fuck you now. It just lacks that edge, that bite. It's just fucking odgy podgy. Oh, it's so fucking a clumsy fucking elephant. If playing Dark Souls 1 and 3 is like going through a swimming pool, swimming through it, Dark Souls 2 is like going through a swimming pool, but of custard. What a fuck about. And all things considered, in Dark Souls 2, there's only one thing which is more defensive and graceful than this. And that is sponsored content. Sponsor note by NordPass. Oh, here I am, okay, it's time to level up, and by leveling up, I mean just spam adaptability. Can't wait. Before you level up, you must give me your password. Oh, bugger me, I set this password ages ago. Uh, how about, uh, your tits are fucking massive. That is true, but also no. Oh, bollocks, how could I forget a random password I set years ago? If only there was a way that I could manage all my passwords. There isn't. Add over. Oh, ding dong, what's this? Looks like my incredibly niche but broad problem has just been solved two seconds ago by NordPass. NordPass's password generator can adjust to meet any password requirement of any website, never stress to create another secure password ever again and keep them all safe in a single password vault. You can now throw that password book in the trash, but I will find it and I will hack you now, but it will not work because you have NordPass. But that sucks for you, Timothy, because I am the NordPass CEO. I will just go on my mega computer and get your details there. Oh wait, even I can't know that because NordPass's zero knowledge architecture encrypts your data on your device before it even reaches our servers. Only you know your passwords now, Timothy, and you will take that secret to the grave. For a limited time, go to nordpass.com slash zerolenny and use the code zerolenny and get 50% off a two-year Nordpass premium plan. Plus, you can get four big months for free. Keep your password safe and organized, you, you bloody idiot. So that is nordpass.com slash zerolenny. And now I have my passwords back. I can level adaptability all day. What fucking fun. Right, so we've talked a lot of things which I don't like here, but let's get into some good stuff. I do like mainly the setting and art style. You look at Dark Souls 1, you look at Dark Souls 3, you see these very grey, monochrome, drab settings, while Dark Souls 2 pushes these really vibrant settings, and it's such a nice change. Yeah, I know the point of Dark Souls is to be like depressing and emo, but while the Chosen and Dead might listen to Linkin Park on repeat, it doesn't mean they can't enjoy a very beautiful world. And yet, going into the world, there's always going to be that one comment was like, oh, look, how can you go up this elevator here on a tower with like no elevator on the top and then come out underneath a lava castle? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I don't care. I really don't. I mean, it just looks cool as fuck for God's sake. Yeah, I know it doesn't make any sense, but does it make it look any worse? No, of course not, you big girl's blouse, it doesn't. Yeah, you can catch some moments here where it doesn't really look as good 
as the others, but overall, it's just fantastic. And for me, this all culminates in one big moment. I love how he'd been told the whole game, seek the king, seek Vendrick, find Vendrick, he's gonna solve all your problems, find Vendrick. And after all this adventure, you finally get there, and it's just this, just this. And then the music kicks in. Oh, beautiful moment, so well done. But then, for me at least, it's all ruined by this one other thing what keeps happening. The Emerald Herald showing up everywhere. Yeah, I know a lot of people think she's really cool. Oh look, she appears on the adventure. I fucking hate it. I'm, I'm like, it's probably just me. But for God's sake, she's just like a little Mary Sue who gets to tag along with the adventure rent free for no fucking reason. Wait, wait, why, why is she here? What is she doing here? There's meant to be all this mystery and intrigue in the world. And it's like, Jesus Christ, how, how did you get here? My name is Shannon Titties, and here is everything to know about the world. Y yeah, but how did you get here? Hum, that's a good one. It's either they wanted to make me seem important and impactful, or just so you could look at my Kahanka Dunkers. Alongside the world, a lot of people would say that the Soulsborne fashion is at its greatest here. For those who are unaware, armor in Dark Souls provides little to no noticeable defensive difference here. So people just like to wear whatever looks best. And yeah, maybe, I don't know, I might put this up there with... Yeah, fuck yeah! Yeah, all right, it's the best one yet. And I mean, seriously, almost anything fits here. Like, I just found this random helmet and a random top, threw it together, and yeah, it, it looks pretty slick. So the fashion is great, the world is great, but there is a little problem here, which is kind of a personal thing, but I do really, really hate it. At the time when Dark Souls 2 was being made, the main team was making Bloodborne. So it fell to FromSoft's B team to cover this. And from the setting alone, it just screams to me that they didn't have a fucking clue of how the game clicks and works. The dead giveaway to me is right at the start. You go into the first house and you get told. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls. All of them, over and over again. <laughs> oh dear, am I playing a hard game here? Oh, I'm, oh no, oh dear. Dark Souls 2 seems to want to constantly remind you that you're playing, ooh, you're playing a hard game, oh, it's a hard game, oh, look at the death counter, ooh, hard girl, you're going to lose your soul. Shut the fuck up. You know, you know how many times Dark Souls 1 and 3 say that? Zero. Because it lets the gameplay do the talking. Here, it's evident they don't know how to make it hard, so they're just like, Oh, say it's going to lose us. Come on now. Let's get, let's get real. I had an older brother. We learned to fence together. He became the most decorated swordsman in all of Mirror. I was really curious about what other people thought about the difficulty here. And with a sample size of 20k votes, it slightly came out the top. Now Dark Souls 2 was a bit easier than the other Dark Souls games until I went into the comments and found out a lot of people just voted harder because the game's world displayed a lot of artificial difficulty. The bosses weren't hard at all, but just the general world had shitty gag squads and also adaptability being a fucking thing. So ironically, in trying to wear this badge of Ooh, hard game, you're going to lose! It actually ends up being one of the easiest. When considering adaptability, life gems, turn-based combat, and finally, the only difficult parts are being cheap gank squads, which yet again shows their misunderstanding of Dark Souls difficulty as a whole. They didn't have to make it hard. I'm not saying it has to be hard. It was their choice. But if they want to do that, don't fucking keep saying, Oh, you're going... Let your gameplay do the talking. Let the game do the talking. Don't try and front it. What a joke. Okay, okay now. This is where we're gonna get controversial. We're gonna get a bit spicy. So I've mentioned adaptability. I've mentioned life gems, two things which people often bring up. And then I've mentioned the combat and general like, world field. These are points which are kind of mixed responses, but now I'm going in hard here. And people might get hurt by this, but I really wanna make you think here, I really do. Power stancing does not add this crazy, unique variety that you think. Oh, okay, hear, hear me out here. Firstly, we have to discuss this. What makes a weapon a weapon? I, I've got two straight swords here. I'm just gonna swing both of them and yeah, let's see. 
There isn't really any difference here. The only thing is that it's a different weapon skin and it can hit a higher or lower number. So they aren't really two different weapons. They're just reskins with a higher or lower damage number. So in my opinion, what makes a weapon a weapon is the move set. What makes a sword and a battle axe two different weapons? It isn't only just the skin and the damage number, it's also the swing animation. The time it takes for their attacks to connect, the stamina used for that swing, that's what makes a weapon different and unique from other weapons. So, now we have power stance, super in-depth feature that lets you create countless combinations and such. Right, so uh, let, let's do some stuff here. Lenny's looking a bit fucking knackered because she's carrying like six swords. Right, two normal swords, side to side. Love it, clean, simple. Right, two great swords, heavier weapons. Gonna be a bit more bit. Okay, whatever, right. Two ultra great swords, massive weapons. It's got, well. Okay, oh no no no, okay, that was, they, they were all swords, right? Let's try two completely different weapons. Like, two axes, yeah that's different, that's different! Okay, that's great, two axes, and two maces. Okay, right, no, right, no no no, okay, this is it. Like, two completely different weapon types, two heavy, and two quick. Right here, okay, two halberds, super heavy, super beefy, like, yes, yes! Two, there we go, massive, love it, right, two nimble, agile. Right, okay, no, 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 let's mix and match it. Like, a curved sword, a normal sword. That's good, yes, that's different, great. Okay, that's great, okay, so the curved sword makes a difference. So like, curved sword, an axe? Oh, oh God. No, right, okay, okay, like dagger? And sword. Because dagger. Stabbing sword. And the sword. Shoot. Dagger. And fa Oh my god, it's the same again. Jesus Christ. Power stancing does not add the variety you think it does. Going back, what makes a different weapon different weapons? The movesets. Otherwise, they're just skins with higher or lower damage numbers. That's it. So what makes the Halberd and Twin Blade Power Stances unique dual wielding options? They're not. They're the same weapon, but with higher or lower damage numbers with different skins. They are the same. Frame, data wise, swing wise, animation wise, they are the same. These are no more different than using a long sword and a broad sword. They're the same weapons with a skin and a number. That's it. And the main thing I assume for a lot of you is that power stance is cool because you just get to combine your two favorite weapons. And I really agree, that, that is really fun. But don't tell me power stancing adds this crazy variety to the weapons because it, it, it just doesn't. Because like 90% of what you hear from it anyway is just people saying, look at my dual wield ultra great sword build. <laughs> these kind of builds in my eyes are just like so common that these are pretty much builds for people who just want to grill for God's sake. What a joke. Right, well, we've talked a lot about why I find this game lackluster. But before we wrap this all up, I haven't got around to by far the most important part. Despite everything I've said, this is what it all comes down to. With everything I've said about the life gems, adaptability, the slow combat, that all doesn't matter one bit as long as you still like the game. Let me try and be as clear as possible here. Yes, I have put forward a very concrete case why adaptability and life gems ruins a lot of the game. Yes, I have shown how the combat is a lot slower than usual and it just kind of makes it all hodgy podgy around the edges. You're still allowed to enjoy the game for that and for what it is. Like for example, yeah the combat is slow, but maybe some people who play Dark Souls 2 love being calm, methodical and tactical in their combat approach rather than just trying to like rush in. Yeah, life gems provide 99 healing opportunities, but some people probably absolutely love that they're not stressed about having to conserve and manage a resource and they just simply enjoy just having a heal button at all times at their disposal. It's your game. You paid $60 for it, you can enjoy the aspects of it in any way you see fit. And don't let sweaty dweebs like me on the internet tell you how to enjoy your games. I imagine this, I'm person A and you're person B. We just both bought Dark Souls 2 for $60 and a few days over, and I come over to you and say, oh, this game sucks because of this, this and that, and I know how to have fun the best. Your fun is not as good as my fun. I, I, I should tell you how to have fun. No, that is so, so wrong. 
Again, yes, I've outlined why I don't like this game, but there's probably people watching this video right now who absolutely love this game for the exact same reasons as I don't like it, and it's just simply in their taste. What I'm trying to say is that if you're a Dark Souls 2 fan who's watched this and probably seen countless comments about why the game is bad, don't let that discourage you. You like the game, which you play because they speak to you. You're not playing Dark Souls 2 so I can refer you and say, oh, you have great taste in games. You're, you play them for you. And that's all it should be. So, saying this, why did I just lash into the game for the past 20 minutes and call it a joke? Well, to be blunt, I simply enjoy putting into words how I feel about this game. Nothing more. I'm really passionate about the Soul series, so when I come across a game from one of my favourite franchises, which I don't like as much, I really just want to pick it apart and just to see why that is. There's that, and I'm sure a lot of people watching would just like my honest opinions here. Right now, I'm going back and looking throughout this review, and there's many times where I've called the game bad, quite, like, quite a lot. Now, honestly now, I, I don't think the game's bad. I, I absolutely agree with the argument that if it wasn't an official Souls game, it would have been received a lot better. But at the end of it all, I honestly think Dark Souls 2 is great. But that's the thing. That might be one of the most scathing things you can say about a Souls game. It's just great. It's not outstanding. It's not genre defining like the previous game. It, it's just great. And that's okay.